Welcome to a tour of the human larynx with me, Jaika, and my model of the larynx created for the anatomy and physiology course, fall semester 2008. First, a little about the model. This model was created with modeling clay and tissue paper tube. I first formed the white clay around the tube to make the cartilages and then baked the pieces to harden. Then on this basic structure, I formed the ligaments and membranes in purple and then subsequently the muscles in pink. Now let us begin our tour. The larynx is a structure made of muscle and cartilage located at the upper end of the trachea. On this model, you can see the hyoid bone on top over here. This is the union between the tongue and the laryngeal structure. It is an unpaired bone with the distinction of being the only bone of the body that is not attached to another bone. The front part is the corpus or body of the hyoid bone. This here is the greater cornum or horn projecting posteriorly and here at the junction of the corpus and the greater cornu is the lesser cornu. The hyoid is the point of attachment for many important muscles such as the sternohyoid, mylohyoid, hypoglossus, thyrohyoid, etc. Below the hyoid bone is a big structure that you can see here and it is called the thyroid cartilage. This too is unpaired and is the largest laryngeal cartilage. The thyroid is made up of two plates called the thyroid laminae, joined at the thyroid angle. This point here is known as the thyroid notch, and this angle here is known as the oblique line. The thyroid bone is open in the posterior aspect and is characterized by two prominent sets of cornu or horns. The inferior cornu project downwards to articulate with the cricoid cartilage and the superior cornu projects upward to um, articulate with the hyoid bone. Sometimes there is also a small triticular cartilage between the superior cornu and the hyoid bone. The next cartilage here is the cricoid cartilage right over here. It is the approximate diameter of the trachea and is a complete ring resting atop the trachea. You can see it is higher in the back. Also here you can see that the arch has two points of attachments or facets of attachment for the arytenoid cartilages. On the side here is the point of attachment or facet for articulation with the thyroid cartilage. Below the cricoid cartilage are the C-shaped tracheal rings. C-shaped because they are open in the posterior aspect. Now let's talk about the two cartilages that we just saw perched on the cricoid cartilage. The arytenoid and the corniculate cartilages. The arytenoid cartilages sit on the superior aspect of the higher arch of the cricoid cartilage. They are shaped somewhat like a pyramid with two processes. The muscular process to which uh, the uh, various muscles uh, of uh, the cricoid uh, are cricoarytenoid muscles sector attached and if you see inside the vocal process to which the vocal ligaments and the vocalis vo uh, and thyrovocalis and the thyromuscularis attach. Sitting on top of the arytenoids on the apex are the corniculate cartilages, these two over here. Also seen here is the epiglottis. It is an unpaired leaf-like structure that arises from the inner surface of the angle of the thyroid cartilage just below the notch. The epiglottis projects upward beyond the larynx and above the hyoid bone. During swallowing, the food and saliva pass over the epiglottis into the esophagus, thereby protecting the opening of the corniculate cartilages. All, uh, sorry, uh, thereby protecting the opening of the larynx. Next, we'll take a look at some membranes and ligaments associated with the larynx. Let us begin from the top. 
this, mem this membrane here connecting the hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage is the thyrohyoid membrane. It is an unpaired fibroelastic sheet that completely covers this area. I've shown it on one side only just to clearly define the structures and the muscles etc. There is an opening here in the lateral aspect to admit the internal laryngeal nerve and artery. This thickened part here is the median thyrohyoid ligament and this round elastic cord is the lateral over here is the lateral thyrohyoid ligament. It forms the posterior border of the thyrohyoid membrane and passes between the tip of the superior cornu of the thyroid cartilage and the extremity of the greater cornu of the hyoid bone. This membrane connecting the inferior border of the thyroid cartilage and the anterior part of the arch of the cricoid cartilage is the median cricothyroid ligament. The cricothyroid membrane though originates on the superior surface of the cricoid arch and rises superiorly and posteriorly, uh, uh, superiorly and medially to insert on the vocal process of the arytenoid cartilage posteriorly and the interior median part of the thyroid cartilage anteriorly. The free borders form the vocal ligaments. The space here between the vocal folds, this whole area, is the glottis. This membrane here connecting the most superior tracheal cartilage, this, with the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage is the cricotracheal membrane. Here is another ligament I, that I want you to see and this is the hyoepiglottic ligament which basically connects the epiglottis with the hyoid bone. This ligament extends from the anterior surface of the epiglottis to the upper body of the upper border of the body of the hyoid bone. And while we are here at the epiglottis, let's also take a look at this area here. The epiglottis is attached to the inner surface of the angle of the thyroid cartilage just below the notch by the thyroepiglottic ligament. Now we will consider some muscles associated with the larynx. This quadrilateral muscle called the thyrohyoid muscle or arises from the oblique line on the lamina of the thyroid cartilage and is inserted into the lower border of the greater cornu of the hyoid bone. Here between the cricoid and thyroid cartilages are the cricothyroid muscles, the pars recta and the pars oblique. This muscle is the primary tensor of the vocal folds. The pars recta courses vertically upwards to insert into the lower surface of the thyroid lamina whereas the pars oblique rises upwards and obliquely to insert at the junction of the thyroid laminae and the inferior horns. Now on the side over here we can see the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle. This arises from the superior lateral surface of the cricoid cartilage and inserts into the muscular process of the arytenoid, causing it to move forward and medially and thereby adducting the vocal folds. On the back here is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. It is the sole abductor of the vocal folds. It originates on the posterior cricoid lamina and then projects up and out of the up and out to insert into the muscular uh, posterior aspect of the muscular process of the arytenoid cartilage. Also on the back here you can see the transverse arytenoid muscle right here and the oblique arytenoid muscles, the cross part over here. The transverse arytenoid muscle spans the posterior surface of both arytenoid cartilages. The oblique arytenoid muscles are immediately superficial to the transverse arytenoid muscles. They originate at the posterior base of the muscular uh, processes to course obliquely up to the apex of the opposite arytenoid. Both of these help to adapt the vocal cords during phonation. Now if we peek inside and get a superior view, we can see the thyrovocalis muscle, this one over here, also called the vocalis, right next to the vocal ligament. It is parallel and adjacent to the vocal ligament, which originates from the inner surface of the thyroid cartilage near the notch and inserts into the lateral surface of the arytenoid vocal process. This muscle is a glottal tensor. 
Immediately lateral to the thyrovocalis is the thyromuscularis over here. This is also called the muscularis and contraction of this muscle relaxes the vocal folds. This completes a basic tour of the larynx. All the information given here has been taken from the book Essentials of Anatomy and Physiology for Communication Disorders by J. A. Siegel, Drumwright and Paula Siegel. I have also consulted Wikipedia and the additional information provided by Professor Golohan in the course modules folder. Thank you.